I'm just going to say it. I think Comicsgate has the best artists in comics. It's been almost five years since a bunch of YouTube channels started gaining popularity by pointing out the fact that there was something not quite right going on in the comic book industry. It felt like the most talented people, whether they be artists or writers, were being looked over and a new crop were being introduced. And these guys, let's just say they weren't exactly like the generations that came before them. And it was on YouTube in 2017 when a lot of energy started to coalesce surrounding this very topic. Critics all of a sudden became notorious. That was the primordial soup from which Comicsgate would eventually be born. And in the early months of 2018, the first quote-unquote official Comicsgate book hit the market and that was Jawbreaker's Lost Soul by Richard Meyer. Since then, despite reports to the contrary, Comicsgate has grown from strength to strength, raising $12.5 million in crowdfunding support on Indiegogo. But the beginnings were humble. Started with one book, one small team, it grew to another, and then another. In that first year, the energy was crazy. It felt a lot like a real consumer revolt, a real movement, but the amount of books were pretty limited. Probably only a dozen or two. Fast forward to 2022, it's only February, and there are already 40 books released by creators affiliated with Comicsgate. Last year, all told, there were over 180. There's so much energy flowing in and around Comicsgate right now, it makes perfect sense that we've attracted some of the top talent from the pool of artists that exist out there. I'm just going to say it. I think Comicsgate has the best artists in comics. But don't just take my word for it. I've put together a small presentation of a very exclusive selection of some of the top artists who were working with or affiliated with Comicsgate. The ones I've selected here are almost all professionals who've worked in the mainstream previously, but there are also some in here that have just built their name and reputation working in Comicsgate. So without much further ado, here are 20 of some of the best artists Comicsgate has to offer. Going by alphabetical order, we can start with Aaron Alfecci. Aaron first broke into comics on the indie title Replicator, but since then has gone on to work with John Malin on Graveyard Shift and Jawbreakers with your boy Zach. Aaron brings a really exciting aesthetic with his line art. He loves dynamic panels, unusual compositions. He crushes action, characters, and backgrounds. And the fact that he's this good with only a few books under his belt means he's a talent to really keep an eye on. Up next, we've got Shane Davis. Shane made his name working for DC on titles like Superman and Metal Men, among many, many others. But Shane gave all that up to pursue a career creating his own IPs. And with Starlight Cats already under his belt and Inglorious Rex on the way, Shane cemented himself as a top tier talent in comic book crowdfunding. We've also got Dan Frager with his bombastic shoot from the hip style. Dan somehow draws fully realized characters and scenes without any kind of underdrawing. It's a talent he cultivated working for many years as a storyboard artist. But Dan also has a 90s comic book pedigree with his IP Black Flag that was published by Image back in 95. If you don't follow what's going on in Comicsgate, you'll be forgiven for not knowing the name Jose Garcia. But in very short order, Jose has taken this corner of comics by storm. Not only with his own IPs, but because of the work he's doing on others, like Graveyard Shift and Tiger Blue. Jose blends anime techniques with a more manga style, which comes from his background in animation. And as incredible as an artist Jose is, what really makes him a tour de force is just how fast he is at pumping out pages. Then there's Trent Kanuga, comic book and concept artist extraordinaire. Trent made his name working on a lot of video game titles like Warcraft and League of Legends, but he also has his own book series, and he's just recently rebooted his Creed comic book series, 
publishing through Ethan Van Skyver's All Caps Comics label. Trent mixes traditional and digital painting styles to create his signature aesthetic, using bold colours to help build his incredibly well-realised environments. Speaking of Ethan Van Skyver, Dal Keown, comic book artist legend, recently sent shockwaves through both Comicsgate and non-Comicsgate by putting out new work featuring characters from the Cyberfrog universe. Keown is a bona fide master of comic book art, and while everyone is loving seeing his takes on these characters, they're just as eagerly awaiting news of a possible pit omnibus that's been hinted at on live streams. Aaron Lopresti is a 30-year veteran of the comic book industry. He's worked on loads of titles for Marvel and DC, including Wonder Woman and X-Men, and now he's trying his hand at crowdfunding, finding huge success in Comicsgate with his six-figure title, Wraith of God. Aaron has a beautifully traditional line art aesthetic with heavy inks and dynamic compositions. It wouldn't be Comicsgate without John Malin, the artist who helped start it all. He broke into crowdfunded comics through Jawbreakers and since went on to find massive success in Graveyard Shift and his latest book, Godlike. We haven't seen much of the art from Godlike, but what we have seen demonstrates exactly why John is one of the most bankable artists in CG. Another OG Hall of Heroes artist that's been drawn back to the medium and is now publishing through All Caps Comics is Matt Martin. Matt's six-figure campaign for A Snowman, A Cold Day in Hell really demonstrates how much raw artistic talent is rewarded in this scene. Up next is another living comic book legend, co-creator of Bane himself, Graham Nolan. Graham's another one of those guys that it just blows my mind that he's not one of the most sought-after artists by corporate comics. Yet that's the world we live in. But all the better for Graham and Comicsgate, because he's on his third campaign now, and I feel like he's just hitting his stride. I can't get enough of Graham's classic lines and impeccable visual storytelling. Next on the list is Patrick Thomas Parnell, one of the real workhorses of Comicsgate. Of all the artists on this list, Patrick has, I'd say, the most cartoony style, and he really makes the use of it with bold colours and super fun compositions. Not to mention it allows him to get books out quicker. Patrick is on his 8th campaign in about 3 years. Which is an impressive feat no matter which way you look at it. Next up is Comicsgate's own dark horse, Shelby Robertson. He seemed to come out of nowhere back in 2020 with his breakout book 94. But when we got to know him, we realized he has a long career in comic books, including being the inker and finisher for one Rob Liefeld. And he brings through that experience and 90s flavor to every single piece that he does. These days, Shelby is continuing his work on 94, as well as doing many covers and side gigs for others in the scene. The next one on the list is a bit of a wild card in that he's primarily a colorist. He also is an accomplished artist in his own right, but he's most well known for his colors, and that is none other than Carl Ritter himself. In just four short years, Carl has cemented himself as one of comic book's greatest working colorists. His understanding of the theory, his ability to set a mood and an atmosphere is matched only by his keen skill with the soft brush. And his collaboration with Ethan Van Skyver on Cyberfrog is surely destined to go down as one of the all-time best pairings in the modern age of comics. This list couldn't even be close to complete without the inclusion of one Kenneth Roquefort. Kenneth's ability with the pencil, pen and paintbrush seem almost mystical, even to hardened, experienced artists. He has a style all his own and is practically unmatched in multiple facets of comic book illustration. Wherever he goes, whatever he does, you'll find his loyal fans, the Roker Force, not far behind. K. 
Kelsey Shannon might just be my favorite comic book artist working right now. I don't know if it's his compositions, his incredibly beautiful colors, or the way he somehow manages to get so much expression out of such loose and seemingly effortless lines. Kelsey Shannon truly is an enigma. And while he's finding great success working for others, we're all waiting for the day where he announces that he'll be putting out his own IP soon. Andy Smith is relatively new to Comicsgate, but he's not new to comic books and has been working in the industry since at least the early 90s. His signature hyper-masculine style with muscles packed on top of muscles definitely seems to harken back to those days. And while Andy's just starting out in crowdfunding, he's already got two successful campaigns under his belt. Another addition that might not be a familiar name to comic book readers outside of CG is Charlie Snogans. Like Dan Frager, Charlie came from the world of storyboarding. And as it seems to be the case with guys who come from that field, Charlie's mastery of line art that's somehow still loose but incredibly precise and expertly rendered characters and backgrounds were what catapulted his and Clint Stoker's book Fatal up into the six-figure category. And on top of all that, he colours too. For over 30 years, Art T. Bear was known primarily as an inker, working on Superman, X-Men, Spawn, and plenty more. When Comicsgate started, Art T. Bear was at the top of his game, a legend in the field. But when it came time to make the choice, Art T. Bear showed everyone what a man of principles is by putting his mainstream pen down and picking up a flag for Comicsgate. In 2022, his three campaigns in, including two for the reboot of his 90s hit series Black and White. And speaking of legends, there's Billy Tucci, the creator of She, Crusade Comics' mid-90s indie hit. And when the crowdfunding boom of 2018 came rolling in, Billy surfed that wave, bringing his much-loved character back to life and raising half a million dollars in the process on Indiegogo alone. And fans of 90s Billy Tucci will be very pleased to see he definitely hasn't lost his edge. And last but not least, the human sunbeam himself, Ethan Van Skyver, host of Comic Artist Pro Secrets, founder of All Caps Comics, and creator of possibly the most valuable new independent comic book property of the last 10 years, Cyberfrog. Back when Ethan was working for DC, he was already recognized as one of the greatest working artists in the field. But when he was forced to leave the mainstream and turn his attention to his own property, I think few could have predicted the extent to which Ethan's art would really take flight. And by coupling up with Carl Ritter on the colors, I think it's safe to say he's going to be at the top of this game for some time to come. And that's it. I tried to keep the list fairly exclusive. Not only to keep the video short, but also because if I start adding this guy or that guy, there's no way I'd be able to stop. And that's what's most extraordinary. As incredible as these 20 guys are, they're just the tip of the iceberg. At this point, there's got to be at least over a couple hundred artists working on CG books. And there's a good chance your favorite artist didn't make it onto this video. But that's what the comment section is for. You guys tell me, who's your favorite artist working in CG? And when you're done doing that, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Get that notification bell on. And I'll see you on the next video. All right, guys. Bye.